Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's begin to find our seats. We're going to start up in just a moment. together, begin to worship God. It's good to be in the house of God this morning. God is great. No creation cries to you. Worshiping in spirit and nature. Glory to the faithful
like no other. Amen. We want to open this service in prayer this morning. We are going into conference, and so let's, uh, let us get, let's believe God and get it happening even right now. Amen. So we want to pray, and uh, I'm sure the devil knows it's conference too, so let's just bind him this morning and all that he would attempt to do. And we want to pray for God's blessing on this t- conference time and upon all of our Uh, preachers that will be coming in and and ministering and those will be coming in and receiving direction. So we want to pray for all of them. We also want to pray this morning. I want to pray a special prayer for folks like uh, Pastor Francesco James, who was going to be with us today and preaching today, but he got as far as Rome and then they turned him around. No, no, you can't travel. You know, there's bugs out there. And so, so they sent him home. So he did his best to come, but uh, uh, he'll have to watch on, on live stream. But I want to pray God will bless them anyway. Those that can't possibly make it, God's going to bless uh, the Smiths and Africa and all these other places. God's blessing on all of our uh, people. How many of you have a need today? Lift your hand. Let's believe God together for all of these. And uh, Pastor Leah is going to come and seal it. Let's pray together. Hallelujah. Lord, in Jesus' name, we pray for your kingdom today with power and dominion. Lord, your blessing come down from heaven. Be with us today, anointing and grace. Ra 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 
باشیم Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence in this morning. Lord God, we pray, God, that you would do your will, God, in our lives. Lord God, bless this morning, God. God, bless everyone who came, God, with an expectancy, God, to hear from you, Jesus. God, we pray, anointing God upon this sermon, Jesus. God, we come before you, Lord, as well for the conference which is coming, God, your presence, God, your anointing, God, your will to be done, Lord God, through our lives, Lord. God, we pray for Francesco, God, and the people who couldn't come, God. Bless them, God, abundantly, God, where they are, God. Touch them, Lord God, so they will experience, God, your power, God. Release, God. Your blessings, God. We thank you, Jesus, for everything, God, you would do, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. You can be seated. Hallelujah. I want to welcome everyone, greet you this morning. Praise God. We want to make a few announcements. First of all, ushers, please meet by the U.S. flag after service with Brother Steve. Uh, tonight... Uh, rather than uh, uh, Francesco James, we're going to have uh, a familiar face. Robbie Hall will be with us to minister this evening, so we're looking forward to a good time. Amen. Then, um, if you still have not gotten your part of the Tempe congregation and you've not gotten your parking card yet, go see uh, Brother Kim Bates. Uh, he's got his hand up back there at the end of service. And uh, one per Per family. Now, I want to say a disclaimer with regard to that before somebody loses the victory. Just because you have one of those cards does not 100% guarantee that you will have a space in the lot to park in. Because if the lot is full, the lot is full. And we can't stack the cars on top of each other. And so, uh, uh, and so uh, uh, it means that if there's spaces left, then, then you can park there. So we understand, and we're not going to take it out on our parking lot workers. Uh, they're, they're dealing with all kinds of challenges this year, and so please remember that. And then we also have, someone was asking me, when are the brochures available? They're out there in the foyer. There's also brochures posted on the back bulletin board. Um, regarding seating, please, uh, during the conference, no seat seating. <laughs> I'm letting it say law. Uh, you know, and so... Now, if you have a special reason why you need a seat saved for you, like uh, you're the piano player for our church or something like that, then you can see, uh, see me and we'll, we'll work on, and especially if you, if you got a little bribe to slip under the table, uh, we'll get you a, a special plaque uh, that you can put on your seat. But all your, all your uh, blankies, take them home tonight. Because our lost and found does not need all of your clothing items that will. That's where they will go at the end of service tonight. Please be aware of that. And so if you need a placeholder, come and see me. Praise God. Okay. Also, I need to meet after service with our check-in uh, ladies and also with all of our van drivers. Very important. Uh, those that will be doing a shuttle service. Uh, and so... Even if you have a, a parking card, and if you can help us uh, in, in any way by not bringing uh, a vehicle, maybe you can get a ride somehow uh, otherwise, then, then that would be a blessing. Also, <clears throat> one last thing I want to say is that, uh, and we'll have to make all these announcements Monday, but we're doing this early too. Uh, parking outside on the street, dropping people off. 
I know we still in this church believe in chivalry, and, and that's a good thing, but uh, we're going to have big old lines of cars dropping people off, and that's not really good. So please try and limit that to people that are, uh, have a, a handicap or that type of thing and are shuttle drivers, and that will really help us. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, ushers, would you kindly come to serve God's people? Always exciting time, folks, before we go to uh, our conference. We get to have some uh, previews. Uh, as Pastor mentioned, our uh, Pastor Francesco uh, was turned back. So we're going to have uh, Pastor Rob Hall, uh, our homeboy, that will be here tonight. He'll be ministering, and Sister um, Adriana. So. Uh, Sister Adriana will be cheering her on, cheering him on. Amen. So, uh, <clears throat> so uh, as we go into the conference, it's always, always, always uh, a week. Uh, you just wonder what's going to happen. You just always um, have this sense, God, what are you going to do? Uh, what are you going to bring to pass uh, as we get into this kind of an atmosphere where we're going to hear preaching? Uh, men that have laid hold of God, fasted, prayed, uh, studied the Word of God, got before God for the mind of Christ for our week. And so I believe that God, just like in our Sunday school time, uh, I believe that the Lord is going to open the Word of God. He's going to give us rhema. He's going to stir us. And uh, always, um, it's a good thing. It's very wise to go in with a heart. I, be, I believe this, that when we have a heart of liberality, and we open our heart to God. Uh, God, I, uh, I'm on board with you. I am appreciating the privilege that we have to serve you, the privilege that we have uh, to um, host this conference. And God, I want to uh, prepare my heart. And one of the ways that we can prepare our heart to receive from God is to give. God looks upon this. Uh, he looked upon Cornelius' giving. But, uh, and he said, you know what? An angel was sent to Cornelius' house. He said, your giving, your alms, your sacrifice, your giving has built a memorial before God. And the angel said, I am come in response to that. Jesus taught us in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together. And running over shall men give to your bosom, for with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Let's bow our heads. I'm going to ask Chris Montenegro, would you ask the blessing? And again, folks, um, I heartily invite you. Uh, you. You may not be a preacher. You may not be a musician or one of the, maybe the people on the stage, but you definitely, definitely have a role to play. And I so... Uh, strongly want to want to remind you God looks and he sees uh, our giving he measures our giving and sacrifice and oftentimes it's giving that causes God to raise his people up brother Chris Amen. God bless your giving this morning. There's a river of life for it down for me. Makes a lane to walk in the blind to see. Open space and doors says the captain's free. There's a river of life for it down for me. Spring up a well. Bring up my soul. Spring up a well. And make me whole. platform please find your seat and may god bless you for your ministry uh this morning uh somebody that was able to get through uh pastor vitale his wife dumi is with us and also pastor uh, slavic 
uh, Slavic Lia from Moldova, the little nation of Moldova. And they were able to get through, we're happy to tell you. And so we've asked our brother to come and minister. Our brother has been a pastor of three different places uh, in Ukraine. Uh, he had a, a two-year stint and then five years uh, in Kiev. That's a major city in, in, in Ukraine. And then moved him uh, to uh, Moldova, Kisinau, Moldova, and where he is now pastoring for the last about six years. And so we appreciate the fact that they came. I understand they spent many, many hours uh, layover in the uh, in the um, airport in, in New York, and then another a bunch of hours on in Istanbul, Turkey. So to get here is not just simply get on a get on a plane and. Phew, point A to point B. It's, it's here, hopscotch around and curve around and go through all this stuff. I say all that to say we're so thankful that they could come and uh, took the time to be with us. And so let's open our heart, Tempe. Let's let them know. We appreciate them. Give our brother a welcome. Test, test, test. Hope. Yes. Yes. Uh, now I know what feel my daughter when I come home in the evening and say, let's show me your homework. <laughs> uh, it's always an honor for me to, to be in this place and, uh, uh, and uh, it's, it's trembling. It's, uh, you know, uh, people saying, oh, 13 years. Uh, in the ministry, but uh, I'm supposed to talk to the people that uh, you are safe more than I'm alive. <laughs> and that's kind of challenge. Um, there is a story that I, uh, I read, uh, uh, really interesting, a couple of stories. There is 27 years old uh, Indian guy, Rafael Samuel. Well, uh, what is interesting about him, he is planning to sue his family, uh, his parents, because they give birth to him. Uh, so he's an uh, antinatalist. Well, it's a new word that they invent. Uh, so he say that uh, uh, he wants to sue his family because they didn't ask his uh, consent uh, to get birth. I mean, <laughs> and, uh, and he was saying that, uh, okay, I understand that our consent can be thought before we are born, but uh, it was not our decision to be born, so as we didn't ask to be born, we should be paid for the rest of our lives to live. <laughs> and uh, you know that the, the most tragic about this guy, uh, he is the one who put voice on it. But uh, we live in a generation that uh, a lot of uh, young people think uh, that that should be like that. Uh, and there's a lot, if you Google a little bit of internet, there's a lot of young, well, if you call 42 years old man young, <laughs> to live with the parents and suing, it was not case in Italy, uh, so because he didn't find uh, the work that uh, raised to his aspiration, so the parents need to pay him like a salary because he's the son. Um, I want to address an unusual topic, uh, and uh, I would, would like to make a point why this message and why now. Uh, the theme of our conference in Miracle Ministry and if we'll think about the miracle ministry, like a typology, about whom we think when you hear the miracle minister. It's like Jesus Christ, right? Like his ministry was a total miracle from the beginning, even this morning session, uh, that's about miracle minister and what Jesus Christ was involved. But uh, uh, what is interesting for me, that before Jesus was uh, getting into this ministry, God himself thought that uh, in order that his ministry would be successful, there need to be another man that will come before him. The name is John Baptist. And he need to prepare the crowd to prepare the Israel in order that when Jesus come, the miracle will be possible. 
Uh, and that, that's true, you know, because uh, it's like when suddenly lights go off in your apartment, in your house. The last thing you think it's that uh, energetic company somewhere did that big nuclear reactor collapsed, right? The first thing, maybe some cable get broke or maybe just light bulb get broke. So usually the problem is on our side. In the same with the miracle, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he never lacked the power of miracles. So whenever there is no miracles or shortage of miracle, usually the problem is on our side. And in order for Jesus to come and to start his ministry work, there needs to be a man who will prepare the Jerusalem, the, the Israel, for they be, will be able to get those miracles. And of course, we know the big chunk of the ministry of John Baptist was uh, repent. His famous sermon, you know, that not so many pastors are there to preach. Uh, <laughs> there was naming people. Um, and, uh, but, you know, but when God put in the Bible about John that was interesting for me, that his core of his ministry would be to turn hearts of the kids to their parents and heart of the parents to their kids. Actually, this is the very last Bible verse in the Old Testament. I mean, this is the high point when God was, would like to, to make you know about. When, when Jesus was coming, when, you know, you, you usually will come to the Bible to read the last verse. And the last verse was, there will come a John, uh, and the, name, the man in the name of in the spirit of July, uh, Elijah, and he will turn the heart of the kids to their parents and heart of the parents to their kids. So I'd like to preach uh, a sermon I call today, Honor Your Father and Mother. And uh, it's pretty uh, heavy, uh, hard to me to preach this one. Mm. So, uh, uh, recently I preached a series on Ten Commandments in our church, and uh, I supposed to preach this, Honor Your Mother and Your Father, on Sunday evening. I chose this time because I was thinking, you know, it's already, they had a heavy sermon on uh, Thou Shall Not Kill in the Morning, and uh, <laughs> so let let, let make it easy. Let's let do some really, really easy. It's Sunday evening. Usually we'll make some testimony. So nothing, nothing harsh on it. Uh, but when I start to preach, God gets involved in that message. I uh, worry and I confess that there's not so many times when I will feel when God is getting totally involved in that. I mean, there was a thick presence of God in that room. Uh, there was um, healing miracles. Uh, there was people that was touched. And, uh, and the, my, my uh, text, my, my, my notes that I was starting the sermon, and uh, what I was finishing with, there was a different sermon. So, uh, uh, before going, ju just a special word for a barren couple. Because I believe this message can solve the problem. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. It's one of the Ten Commandments, and it's called like this. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving to you. And when you read through Ten Commandments, you will find that six of the Ten Commandments focus on relationship. First four is about you and God, and another six, it's about relationship between people. And uh, from this six, the first one is this one. So before getting any further, God wanna fix this issue. And uh, it's, it's really interesting for me because uh, we are not thinking about uh, this problem as God is thinking. Uh, I, I was making like a poll uh, about how people think. Let, let's, 
Let us make a pool, top three, the worst sin in the Bible. Usually, what, what do people think? Killing is pretty bad, right? Uh, another one would be stealing. I didn't like it, absolutely. Uh, maybe another, right, think something horrible. Oh, no, okay, well, don't go like genocide is basically killing, you're just big. Uh, <laughs> For me, that, the, the, the worst, worst, worst would be like uh, maybe, I you know, being a gay. That, 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 sound, that sound really bad. <laughs> and you, you think that that should be like cutting edge in the Bible. But if you start to look how God is looking on the sin in, in, in the Bible, uh, you'll see a different top chart. One of the, the worst things that God hates is pride. You know, if you're prideful, you have little, no chance to, you stay in front of God, and God is in front of you, and you'll not pass through that. Also, lying is a pretty bad issue in the eyes of God. I mean, he called that the, the Satan as the father of lie. And it's a whole story about the lying. But the third, maybe I would say the first one, it's disobeying and dishonoring the leadership, God, parents. God cannot stand it. And, and just before going in, in all the sermon, you know, there is a huge problem. Because when you look on the three, pride, lie, and, uh, and, uh, and dishonoring, uh, we are all guilty of those. More than that, we are thinking that's not a big deal. I mean, how many people are here who killed somebody this week or last week? <laughs> not so many, thank God. <laughs> uh, or, or, you know, going in all this uh, perversion or, uh, you know, stealing, robbery. Uh, but... How about uh, lying this week? How about would be prideful this week? How about dishonoring your parents this week? Because we think it's not a big deal. It's kind of, when I start the sermon, I was thinking, what I should preach about that? It's like a small issue. But this small issue, God put it in the top 10 commandments. Can you figure this? I mean, forget about all the Bible. If you have only 10 commandments, you'll, you, you'll know about this. Yeah. And, you know, you have a really interesting company on the street a couple miles ahead. It's called Pro Choice or something like that. Uh, you know, the abortion, it's God's idea. Oh, okay, Don't, I, I know some spiritual folks already you know spiritually breaking the harm and throwing spiritual stone. No, no, let's look in Old Testament. Abortion, it's a God, God's idea. Well, it's, it's a little bit different how God's viewing this. God's viewing that as long as your child is disobeying you, you have right to kill him. Do you, do you have a Bible verse? I'm glad you ask. I have a not only one. Exodus 21, 15. And he who strikes his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. I mean, if I would do this to my mom, uh, she, would, uh, she wasn't too religious woman, but she will apply this law to me. <laughs> Or how about that? Two verses later, Exodus 21, 17. He who curses his father on his mother shall surely put, be put to death. Uh, not even hitting. You know what mean cursing? Using profanity? Talking back? Rolling eyes? <laughs> Famous whatever. Preach it. 
Old Testament say, if you are doing this, you deserve an abortion. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, Bible say, you know, if the parents had a disobeying child, they'll bring in the front of the congregation, uh, and pastor will take a plastic bag, just because, no, not to stain it too much. <laughs> Tell me, kid, what's happened? What do you say about your mom and your father? Uh, guys, let's fix this. You see, because God is... Uh, even if you kill a man by mistake, you, have, you are able to escape. There was a special city for that. But if he was disobeying your parents, talking back, talking bad about them, God say you surely are not worthy to live. And this is pretty heavy because you never think about that as is to be like such a big problem. You know, the school, the, 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 the people around us, they just use with that. I mean, you go in the Walmart, you go in every store, you're seeing all these acting crazy kids. And, um, and God say, I hate this. I really, 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 really hate this. And basically, if you are doing this, you are not worthy to live. And let me tell you, folks, that God didn't change a bit. And uh, I know it, it, it's hard to talk. You see, Leviticus 93. Every one of you shall reverence his mother and his father. Deuteronomy 27.16. Cursed is he who dishonor his father or mother, and all the people shall say, Amen. What we read, church, is not pretty. Uh, respecting and honoring the parents, it was so important in God's eyes that he put that penalty. Not all the sin from Ten Commandments reserved death penalty. Do you know that? I mean, for stealing, if you steal a cow, you'll bring another five, but you kind of, okay. You, you, you lose your money, you, you go bankruptcy, but you're still alive. As I say, with the killing, that there is a hope. But God say, if you honor your mother and your father, you will have years to live. If you don't do that, your life will be pretty short, and I will take care of that, says the Lord. You, you can read it backwards, you know? <laughs> and and this, is, this is tragic. Because I think there is something that we cannot really understand what's happened and why God is doing this. Pastor, it is Old Testament. Let's go to New Testament. Grace, right? Okay. You know the, the letter of F, to, to Ephesus Church? And I, I have imagination, godly imagination now, I'll say, Pastor. Uh, I, I, I can imagine how, how it's happened. You know, somebody shouting, hey, Pastor Paul, send the letter. So everybody's coming, you know, the, the families, Pastor Paul sending the letter. Well, it's, it's interesting, you know. It's not like the chapter. It's, not the, they, the, the, it's a letter that will be written to the church. And, and it's... If you read Pastor's letters, Pastor Paul's letters, he's a little bit different than Jesus. Uh, no, uh, j just grammatical. Jesus is pretty short. He, he used common language. Uh, Paul is more eloquent. Uh, when you try to work on syntaxis on the sentence that Paul read, you'll figure out that about four or five verses it's just one sentence. <laughs> and it's deep. 
epistle of Ephesus is it's so rich, deep. Uh, I love this epistles. But for kids, I understand it's boring. And I, I imagine, you know, those kids staying there like, okay, and, and God, Paul is reading all this nice word and everything. But suddenly, chapter 6, well, not chapter 6, but to the kids, to the children. And all the children, oh, Pastor Paul remember us. He wrote for us kids. And by the way, we are all kids. I bet there is no one here who was uh, genetically modified and have no parents. I mean, you have parents. I had parents. That's, that's, that's how it works. Good. <laughs> Children, obey your parents in the Lord. And it's shocking. Because, you know, you would expect that, that Paul will come with some, you know, deep theological doctrine. Children, obey the Jesus Christ. Uh, pray more. Read your Bible. Go here and hold the world. You know, all this good stuff that you can talk, tell to the kids. But instead of talking to all of those, that those are important, Paul say, obey your parents. Children, obey your parents. Now, let's, let's put it all, all together. Because, uh, you see, first, we know already that God is really hard on this issue obeying and honoring their parents. If you don't do this, you deserve death. Can we agree on this? Yeah. This is the Bible. Also in New Testament, Paul, who is hearing from God, saying to the kids the same issue. This is the Bible. Also, before Jesus come to start his miracle ministries, God said, I need to send John the baptized to fix this issue. Can you see a link? Can, because when you read this, can you see that obeying your parents have a straight link with the miracle ministry? Dishonoring your parents can close the door to see miracles in your life, to, be, to see fruitfulness in your life, to see long years that is a miracle in your life. You know that that word obey, it's really, uh, it's a really interesting word. It's apatho. And another place that Peter is using this in order with the uh, the wife that need to submit their husband, even that when they don't obey God willingly. So the same word of obeying. So when Paul say about kids obeying your parents, it's basically he say that person that is not ignorant of the truth, but he is defiant and rejecting the truth. And how many of us kids, and when I talk about kids, I talk about people under 90 years. <laughs> under, no, not, not 19, 90. To make it clear, you know. You know, and then the, here is the issue that when God took the sermon. Uh, I know there is a people right now who right from the beginning, when they hear honoring your mom and your father, shut me down. I know it because, uh, because I am a father and I am a child. I know this. And uh, you see, some people will say, uh, I need, so pastor, you tell me, I need to respect 
my parents, right? Do you know what my parents was? How they treat me? Uh, yes. It's hurtful it sounds, but don't, I'm afraid that only answer that I have, even those parents, you need to uh, obey. I know that there are evil parents. I know it. Moldova uh, is the country when I, where I'm ministering. It's a sinful country. And in this country, the child abuse, it's almost national sport. It's so bad. I mean, uh, Girls and boys are abused by their childhood, by their drunk fathers, stepfathers, brothers, uncle, grandfathers. Uh, girls that are sold by a couple of glasses of vodka. Kids that are forced to beg an intersection while their parents eating nice hamburger near and shouting, bring me the money. Uh, parents that leave their kids on relatives because they want to get a new toy, so they going in different countries to work and leave their kids just by themselves. And uh, uh, bruised kids, uh, beaten with bestiality, taken by the legs and hit by the walls. I know the stories. I, I, I hear the stories. And it's, it's, so, so you, you, it's not like, pastor, you're ignorant, there are bad parents. I am not ignorant about that. I know there are demon-possessed parents. I, but, but still, you know, uh, God didn't make no exempt for that. Even for the ladies in a marriage, you know, obey husband in, in the Lord. There is like little, if it's not in the Lord, you can do something, but, but with kids is nothing. And, and it's painful, I know. I, I, do, I will not tell how many times, you know, these kids, they will, will cry. They will ask why, why, why it's happened with me? Why? And you tell me I need to honor that beast? And, and thank God, I, I, I believe that maybe there is somebody here that had the similar story. But the most tragic is that majority of kids that are here right now, you have a good parents. You have a Christian parents. The parents that protect you. The parents that you never saw them drunk or beaten you and still rolling eyes, whatever, and everything that works. Can you say this? And I know how hard this is. At the end, a couple of things that I would like to make clear. First, we talk about forgiveness in this situation. Yes, there are kids you need to forgive your parents. And that's another sermon. That's another long sermon, a lot of sermons pastor preach about forgiveness. If you not forgive, you'll not be forgiven, and especially your parents. So I, I'll not go further on this one. Second, that I believe that is why it's so important. Our parents, in a way, are our creators. They create us. Can we agree with that? And you see, when you dishonoring your creator, when you disobeying your creator, you make a platform, you make a habit, you make a lifestyle where you will not be able to honor and obey your real creator. Here is where, where it's this, why, why Satan is telling you that it's nothing important. Because he knows if you is dishonoring 
and disobeying your real creator, forget about miracles. Forget about everything. By honoring your parents, you train yourself in honoring God. You see, my father wasn't a bad guy. He'll beat me from time to time when he get drunk. Uh, once I swear that I will kill him, almost done it. Uh, because of alcohol abuse, he'll never have time for me. But, uh, no, he is dead now. He went to hell. That's another story. But uh, I caught myself in my mind. When I get saved, I, I was bitter on my father. But then I learned to forgive him, and I start to honor him. And let, let can I be sincere today? Uh, yeah, it's a church. Okay, at least in the church. <laughs> Sometimes... I am lying. Well, at least I call it faith. Because I attribute to my father quotes, quotes or behaviors that he never had. I would say, well, my father would say something good about it. He never said that. But I would like that he would say this. And I, often I caught myself that I'm trying to, to make a nice name for my father, for my mother. Uh, there was the guy who teach me to drink, to smoke, he introduced me to porn, and, and all this kind of, but still he's my father, and I train myself to honor him. And right now I can be sincere in front of you, I love my father, I love my mother, I'm, honoring, I'm not agree with what they done, what they do right now, but I'm honoring them. And when I learned this, listen, listen carefully, when I learned this truth, my spiritual life started to change dramatically. I start to see miracles in my ministry, in my life. That was when I deal with this, I was able to stand in front of them, in front of people, and God was using me. I was able to prophesy from God. I was able to put, lay hands on people and they would get healed. Because, you see, th th there is a big problem. When you start to honor your father and your mother, you claim your rights on Adam's inheritance. God, devil wants to take you apart to cut you from your roots, to be you only one. And when you're only one, you have no power at all. But when you're honoring your parents, when you say, okay, I'm blessed because you're alive now. You are in God's kingdom. And this is because your parents give birth to you. But when you recognize this and you obey and honoring them, you claim the Adam inheritance upon your life. You say, I am from my fathers. I am not by myself. My history is long. I didn't come by myself here. There was people before me. And line goes up to my his father Adam and was belonging to Adam by the blood of Jesus I can claim it I am not a foreigner to that because it's mine by blood and this is where the power come you see we, we, we're really looking on this like pretty easy stuff so what's the big deal just to answer to your fathers what big deal just to roll your eyes what a big deal just to despise, it is a big deal. Because when you train with your parents, you'll do the same with your creator. You, th there is no miracle in that. How you treat your parents, the same you'll treat God. By mind, you'll say, oh no, I love God much more than my parents. But when you go to critical situation, 
can you trust God when you never was able to trust your father? You need to train yourself in somebody that you know. And God see and God say, this is a huge issue. Want the miracles? Want to see miracles in your life? Want to see my hand upon your life? Fix this. Let's bow our head and close our eyes. You see, miracles demand trusting. There was, we never planned with Pastor Olson, all this, he, he preached uh, this morning, uh, this um, Sunday school. But miracles demand trusting. And uh, with God, it's, God, I can trust you that you will not harm me. I'm honoring you. I trust you. I believe that you are able and you will not harm me. This is the critical. Maybe you are here. First, you are not saved. That means your life is horrible. Confess it. Your life is a mess. You're in a good place. Here's the place where you can meet Jesus Christ. God himself that, that loved you so much that sent his son to die for a sin. And if you are here, you are not saved. You can raise your hand and I, I will be honored to pray with you, to introduce you to our living God for, and for his forgiveness. Maybe you backsliding. You want to come back. Raise your hand, please. I would like to pray with you. I see this hand. Maybe somebody else. I, I know God, God is teaching your heart today. Maybe I, I open, I open the, the, some, some, some bruise in, in your heart. Maybe something that it was hiding for a long time, but, but now it just explodes. You're angry, you're bitter, you're almost crying because you know what's happened. And it's hard to forgive. You, you'll not be able, except you accept forgiveness from God. Raise your hand. Show me. Say, Pastor, I, I know you're talking about it. I, I, I would like. Uh, there was people that raised your hand. Can you raise one more time? Lady, you, you were serious with that? You want this? Uh, and, and somebody else, there, there was. Can, can, can you just come in front? If, if God spoke to you, you want to wanna make your relationship with God? You just can come, you can come, sister. And there was somebody else. Uh, can, can be a sister that can, can come and pray with this lady? Oh, yeah, thank you. Hallelujah. You know, it's, Bible say it's a part in heaven. Angels are singing hallelujah because, because this is a miracle. Now, Pastor Olson was talking about the miracle on the Genesis Retriever. In my opinion, the biggest miracle was when Peter, the expert, say, okay, God, I will listen to you. It's like, it's, it's really, I'm listening to you, rookie. I listen to you, I don't. You. And this is, we can think about, God, I don't know your experience with this, but I'm trusting you. And I would like to make, to change the, the calling. And uh, I would like to talk to, first, all those who was hurt by your parents. And you know that pain that I a little bit resurrect today. You need to forgive it. Also, I want to talk secondly to all the kids under 21, 22 who live with your parents. Listen, you need to change something in your behavior. Start to honor your mom and your dad. And you'll, you'll see, you'll see dramatic change. You'll see like heaven and earth will be on this. And also, whatever your age is now, maybe you're 70, I don't know. But God is speaking to you. Honor your father and your mother. Stop bad talking about them. Start to honor them. Death and life at the tip top of your tongue. Use it wisely. Use it to create. If God speaks to you, this altar is open. You can find a place to pray. 
Haleluja. Haleluja. I believe God is working in miracles in this week, and you'll see those miracles. But listen to me, church. All those miracles start when your heart is turning to your parents, and your parents' heart will turn to you. When you fix this issue, you'll see a tremendous outpouring of Holy Spirit upon your life. And maybe there is somebody of you that after this sermon, you'll need to go to your father and mother and say, please forgive me. I was rude. I was disrespectful. Please don't let it go. Do this. And you'll see, they will not say, oh, yeah, yeah. No. They will hug you, I promise. They will cry with you. I believe right now there is a deliverance here. I believe right now. When I was preaching this message, there was a lady in our church. She was fighting, getting killed. But right in the middle of this, she started to tremble and she confessed, I know that I was healed. Listen to me. You can be healed today. Hallelujah. 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 God is good. God is great. Hallelujah. Let's stand up all together and I'd like for everybody who, who want and feel to, to introduce you to a prayer. And you can repeat after me this prayer and say, Dear God, I thank you that I am alive today. And I thank you for my parents. I forgive them for all they have done for me. And please forgive me for all the time when I was acting disrespectful, when I was acting dishonoring him, them, and I was bad talking about them. I understand now that this is a critical issue on your heart and I submit myself to your word and I believe that you will open the gates of heaven upon my life and the promise that I link to this commandment will be fulfilled in my life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Create saith the Lord thy God, for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. And when I hear the words that come out of your mouth, I know what is in your heart, saith God. For the despisings of the things around you come through your heart, to, out through your mouth, and through your mouth to, out to the world, and it, and it opens up the world to the faith or the lack thereof that is in your soul, saith God. For I have called you to repentance this morning to bring about a great miracle in this time of your life and in time of this congregation, said God. And if you will hear me and obey my words and loose these things uh, upon your life, God, faith uh, will open up doors that you cannot even imagine, said God. Faith uh, of, of righteousness, faith of goodness, of my goodness towards your life, said God, will open up doors before you that you've never even thought of, said God. For I know the things that I have, that I have before that I have for you, saith God. 
thoughts of goodness and kindness. Uh, if you will believe those things, saith God, fighting those that are those things that are within you that are despised by lack of faith and despising of generations of sins that are against you and sins uh, of unforgiveness, saith God, there will be a mighty release uh, this day and this day forward in your life, saith God. Loose these things from your life and be released unto the miraculous power of God Hallelujah. that I have before you, saith God. Hallelujah. Let's praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Let's give God praise one more time. Father, we worship you. God, we bless and we praise and we shall glorify your name. Oh, Jesus, help us, God. Lord God, as we go to conscience, praise God. I want to appreciate that word. Uh, that's very timely as we go into conference uh, to allow the Spirit of God to have his way. And many, many, many times it's just clearing out things that can obstruct and things that can hinder. That's why John the Baptist came, lead us to repentance and make things straight in our lives. So God has an easy access to move in and to move out in the things that he has planned. So I appreciate that. Uh, this week we're heading into the conference. God is going to absolutely blow our minds. He's going to encourage us. Good things are for those um, that will press in. The kingdom experiences violence. The violent take it by force. That means some energy. That means some determination. That means uh, don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Just put your eyes on Jesus and let's let God be the Lord in this place. And I can prophesy if we'll do that, we're going to have a tremendous visitation. Can somebody remember? It was just last September we had our last conference. A Holy Ghost, um, encouragement, um, good things. And I know God is not uh, running short. Hallelujah. So let's um, uh, be dismissed. We're going to have service tonight. Uh, 6.30, prayers at 5.30. And uh, I appreciate Pastor Kuhneman uh, taking the uh, time to share those announcements. Um, Remember about the parking issue. If you can double up, uh, maybe you can even, uh, some of the couples and friends, you could pick up some single people or some singles can join together. And if we carpool, we're going to have plenty of room. Uh, the, the biggest issue is the parking, obviously. And so if we can, uh, if we can just uh, help out. If you're going to park over at Safeway area or over at uh, the Office uh, Max, I think it's called, or whatever it is over there, uh, don't park right in on their uh, their doorway. Give them, give them some room. There's plenty of the parking out if you park out in the middle. Amen. Let's bow. Brother Ken, would you lift your voice, dismiss us for God's blessing. Amen. God love you. Love somebody as you go.